Well, good, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the February 25th edition of the Free Thought Forum, s s put on by the Pennsylvania Nonbelievers, a organization dedicated to providing community for the nonbelievers of Pennsylvania, as well as preserving the separation of church and state. We got a bit to talk about tonight, but before we get into the main topic, I thought I would uh, cover a, one last reminder of the our annual meeting, which is this Saturday in York, all, all at the Unitarian Universalist Church on South George Street. If you need directions or any other information regarding that, it can be found on our website, www.panonbelievers.org. Also, if you're interested in running for a board, uh, a position on the board, while it's not required, it's, uh, it would be helpful to know ahead of time. But the main topic that we had in so for this evening is this last weekend, there was a podcast-a-thon to, to raise money for the secular charity Foundation Beyond Belief. Now, for, if you don't know what Foundation Beyond Belief is, it is a very large network of secular charities. It covers a lot, of, a lot of different aspects of, uh, of humanism and around, around the world and around the country. Uh, they, every, month, every quarter, they promote five different charities. As you know, there's a lot of different charities out there, so it's kind of hard to, to, to find out what's all out there, and they, they do the research for you. And they promote in five different categories. They are poverty and health, uh, ch charities to benefit those causes, education, human rights, the natural world, which is an environmental, which is environmentally focused charities, as well as what's called Challenge the Gap. Now, what Challenge the Gap is, is Charities, they're charities for progressive, non profitizing religious charities. <coughs> which the reason they promote, the tr mostly because, you know, we as non-believers really don't want to uh, completely alienate the religious when it comes to doing works of charity. Well, most people don't really think that uh, we do uh, any work for charity because <laughs> mainly w we don't really advertise it; uh, we do it. Right, right, and that's that's really the purpose of the Foundation Beyond Belief is to promote all these humanistic charities, and to give you an example of you know what they mean by a progressive non profitizing charity, is the uh, their their particular charity for this quarter is also called is actually the Child Friendly Faith Organization, which is dedicated to preventing religiously inspired child abuse which is a massive problem we're not just talking about the Catholic Church here there are a lot of problems like just this last week a couple was sentenced to seven years in prison for letting their second child in three years die of a treatable form of pneumonia but mm -hmm. since they believe that simply praying for it will cure the person there's a lot of neglect and this also there's several there are many, many, many studies done that shows a correlation between religiosity and child abuse. And they also, <coughs> they also are involved in crisis response, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a bit. So uh, what I think I'd actually like to do now is this uh, Foundation Beyond Belief it also puts out a lot of videos on YouTube uh, describing what they do. And what I thought I'd play for you now is, a, their is their first quarter report on the organization, just to give you some feel for what the organization is about. So if you could play that video now. Humanist volunteer teams across the U.S. complete 30,000 hours of community service. The Pathfinders head to the Dominican Republic, continuing a year of global service. Humanist crisis response raises over $60,000 for typhoon relief in the Philippines. The Humanist giving program tops $1.4 million raised for charities worldwide. 
This is Foundation Beyond Belief. Each quarter, the members of Foundation Beyond Belief support five charities with unique and effective approaches to building a better world. Here are our featured charities for the first quarter of 2014. The American Foundation for Suicide Prevention is dedicated to understanding and preventing suicide through research, education, and early intervention. To preserve our planet, scientists tell us we must reduce the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. 350.org raises awareness of climate change worldwide to compel a quick and meaningful response to this crisis. Safe Passage provides financial and material support to enable children in Guatemala to attend school, a crucial step to lift themselves out of endemic poverty. In our human rights category, the Ali Fournee Center helps homeless LGBTQ youth in New York City to stay safe and independent as they move from adolescence to adulthood. Our grant this quarter will support career and educational services. Our Challenge the Gap category supports one progressive, non-proselytizing religious charity per quarter. This quarter's selection is the Child Friendly Faith Project, an interfaith effort to end religiously inspired child abuse and neglect. Foundation Beyond Belief is a 100% pass-through organization, meaning every dollar donated to our featured charities goes to those charities. On the volunteer side of the foundation, our Beyond Belief Network helps local humanist and atheist groups become a visible force for good in their communities, raising awareness and funds for important causes and engaging in community service. Beyond Belief Network has grown to 92 teams in 30 states and has given over 30,000 hours of service. Some highlights from the past few months. Humanists of Houston packed over 11,700 meals at the Houston Food Bank, enough to feed almost 500 needy seniors for a full month. The secular hub in Denver sorted medical supplies for hospitals in developing countries through Project Cure. Harvard humanists joined with several religious and non-religious groups to pack 50,000 meals for hungry children in the greater Boston area during Thanksgiving week. The Secular Student Alliance of Northern Arizona University made improvements to a Habitat for Humanity house in Flagstaff, Arizona. Women's Leadership Project is a feminist humanist college prep mentoring program for girls of color in South Los Angeles high schools. WOP rocks. In November, the foundation raised over $62,000 to support relief efforts after Typhoon Haiyan devastated the Philippines. And finally, the four humanists of our Pathfinders project finished 2013 with human rights and education work in Uganda and Ghana. This quarter, they move on to water and public health projects in the Dominican Republic, Ecuador, and Colombia. The ultimate goal of Pathfinders is the creation of a permanent global humanist service corps. If you are a secular person looking for a community of compassionate humanists, Foundation Beyond Belief is looking for you. Encourage your local group to join the Beyond Belief Network. Follow the Pathfinders around the world. Or become a sustaining member of our humanist giving program for as little as $5 a month. It's all at foundationbeyondbelief.org. Foundation Beyond Belief. Humanist giving. And that's the foundation beyond belief. And in case you're wondering, the Pennsylvania Nonbelievers is a me is a member of the foundation be uh, of the foundation beyond belief network. And what I really love about what they do is they attack the prob you know, problems in this world on multiple fronts. For example, if you look at the problem with violence in the world, they can all be tied to the same things, mostly poverty and lack of education. So all of those things have to be addressed at once. And, and another thing I'd like to talk about with the crisis response, I don't know if this is active yet, but 
If you remember early last year, the tornado that took out Moore, Oklahoma. <laughs> yes. Uh, there was there was a lot uh, a lot of uh, a lot of talk about that, and one of the main one one of the main things that brought a big circle around that, especially for the secular community, was a woman by the name of Rebecca Witzman, who was outed by Wolf Blitzer on. Was so cute. And. Since then, she's actually been working with secular organizations mm -hmm. to step up disaster relief. Not just uh, we saw with it, they've already have you know a disaster relief fund <laughs> for donations, but what she has been really pushing for is is for volunteer work to help with disaster relief, and has been working with the foundation Beyond Belief to try to set something up. I don't know exactly how far off that is, but it's just something to keep on look for on the horizon, because one of the one of the main struggles with in, in the secular community is is really finding a good network. It's not the lack of willingness. It's you know when you're when you're outside the church, there's you're kind of outside the loop of what they're doing. And it's easier for the church, you know, with a larger network, with more people, to organize, you know, a massive effort like that on the fly. Mm -hmm. So that's really what the, uh, the the foundation on belief is trying to do here, is provide that organization that's so badly needed. Well, the thing is that we have had sort of a uh, we as a a non-believer or doubting uh, sort of community that you know in, involves everyone. Uh, there you know, non-believers, atheists, uh, you name it. In the past, uh, uh, when there have been uh, disasters or needs uh, for volunteers, uh, the, the the services of uh, our uh, group of uh, people uh, has been uh, largely rejected. Uh, because we are who we are. They don't want to uh, be um, associated uh, with uh, your atheists or agnostics. And and I believe that actually is something that happened in the uh, Texas group mentioned in the, in the promo video. Yeah, and I, um, I had uh, something a few months ago where this woman had a soup kitchen and uh, she couldn't get people to uh, uh, volunteer. Uh, for the, uh, the the soup kitchen, and uh, you know, even though she was uh, she was asking, and a whole bunch of uh, atheists says we'll be only too pleased to help, and uh, um, basically she she said that she'd close uh, the place and resign before uh, she would let uh, people like us um, help the people. So um, this is a good thing because we don't have to ask other people if we can help them. We can sort of go directly to the uh, the, the source of the uh, the problem yeah. it, it itself, and uh, it, it it also makes sure that we. Uh, you know, we don't take money for our services. These are all, uh, you know, 100% uh, gifts. Right. Whereas, you know, some places will take a, a large percentage um, of donations. Right. And there's there's always an, an issue with uh, religious based charities where you don't. Well, what we do want to give to needy people, there's, with religious-based charities, there's always the issue of them using the money to prophetize. Uh, we saw it with the Catholic Church actually sending Bibles into <coughs> disaster-stricken areas, or charities actually building churches before, before, well, before they, they, they solve the problems that are down there. So these, these provide an alternative for us. And, I, and before I go much further, I want to remind people that this is a call-in show. If you would like to talk about uh, the Foundation Beyond Belief or anything else we have to talk about tonight, the number will be appearing on your screen. And, and you know, this uh, is, you know, questions or comments, you agree or disagree. Um, let us know and uh, give us a call.
So once again, the website for that is foundationbeyondbelief.org, and they also have their own YouTube channel under that name. Uh, now, as I mentioned before, there was a podcast-a-thon online this w this past weekend to raise money for it. Much less all like much less like a telethon. They brought in a very very large list of speakers to promote to promote the ch the the organization. Uh, some of those speakers included uh, some very well-known faces, such as Seth Andrews, uh, who's the host of the Thinking Atheist, Jerry DeWitt. Uh, one one met thing I want to side mention on Jerry DeWitt, he's also worked with another organization called Common Grounds, which is to try to encourage more cooperation between the secular and religious community. Could you throw that uh, list up on the screen, full screen, because I... Uh I couldn't read uh, what the list said, uh, Jim. Okay. Uh, but the uh, this online, you can find the uh, the complete list online. But it also had uh, people like Jamila Bay, uh, Jacqueline Glenn, quite a few names. Uh, also, um, also Dale McGowan, qu you know, quite a few, quite a few names, big names from around the organization, and all of them did a wonderful job of promoting the organization. Uh, several of them offering matching to match donations while they were while they were the ones speaking. Others uh, giving. Others giving giving, what do I want to say, giving uh, promotional items for the organization to try to encourage more donations. Uh, for example, I think David Fitzgerald uh, donated a few of his books. A couple of people, you know, put books up, like, if you donate in the next hour, we'll, en you know, we'll enter you in a drawing for this book. Mm -hmm. uh, which actually, to my surprise, I won a book from Richard Dawkins. Are you kidding? No. Ah, that's <laughs> uh, fantastic. It, so I'll be <laughs> receiving a copy of uh, his book. Uh, what was it? It was An Appetite for Wonder. Yeah. Now, is he going to autograph it? Now, I that would don't, be cool. <laughs> that would be cool, but I don't think he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot, of, uh, a lot of people doing a wonderful job, especially the Richard Dawkins Foundation. Uh, they they were there throughout the podcast, you know, doing whatever they could to encourage donations, and it was a fairly successful podcast. They didn't quite meet their goal, but they raised over two thousand dollars for a Foundation Beyond Belief. And one of the other speakers on the list uh, was actually our very own Brian Fields, the president of Pennsylvania Nonbelievers, and we actually have an audio clip from his uh, from his section on the podcast, and if you could play that clip. Something about the uh, Foundation Beyond Belief and why people should donate money to it, and I think, uh, you know, they are such a wonderful organization that's out there really answering the question that uh, Christians ask, uh, which is, why aren't atheists, you know, donating their time, money, and helping out? And the, the Foundation Beyond Belief is our uh, answer to that question, and without money, uh, we would just sit there and stand dumbfounded and not remember all the wonderful things that are going on. So it's, it's a wonderful placeholder so that everybody in the movement can say, look, we're out there doing something, even though there are thousands and thousands of atheists around the world out there always contributing and giving stuff. The Foundation Beyond Belief rolls right off the tongue and it's something that it's easy to remember and they do a lot of wonderful work. Absolutely. Brian, let me ask you one question. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a lot of listeners on the spot. Mm -hmm. So, all the people that are listening that don't donate or at least share the show, would you say they're doing the same as just praying? Yeah, I think so. Uh, <laughs> in, in, order, in order to uh, be out there and actually be doing something, if... if, if uh, uh, you know, giving that one dollar uh, to you're doing uh, more than prayer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, much more in prayer, and and you're you're actually accomplishing something. So. so, so listeners, think about that. 
and that was Brian Fields. Uh, I like what Eddie mentioned. Is, oh, it's almost the same as praying if you're not, if you're just listening. The the reason I, I like that equating it to praying is I think Seth Andrews, uh, the host of the Thinking Atheist, really had it right when he once said, sometimes when sometimes when Christian says I'll pray for you, it's almost a cop out. It's a way of of feeling like you're doing something without actually doing something. Mm -hmm. I've often wondered whether or not uh, people that tell me they will pray for me actually pray for me, you know, that, that night before I go to bed. I mean, right. they, they don't even know uh, my name, but uh, do they say, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, God, please bless that guy that was sitting uh, in the, uh, the, the chair down at the giant store, you know, one over by the, the <laughs> door, like that. And, you know, all it is, it's just a catchphrase. I'll, I'll pray for you. But uh, I'd be so surprised, uh, you know, if it's peek in the window at night and see them uh, yeah. down on the knees. Usually the people that say they'll pray uh, probably haven't prayed in the past uh, year or so, haven't even attended church. Yeah. And w one other thing Brian said that is right, it's, you know, the, the Foundation Beyond Belief provides this nice central organization, <laughs> even though there are organizations all over the world and atheists participating in in charities all over the country you know for me personally my my personal way of promoting education is I I, I volunteer at a local literacy council which helps uh, adults get their GEDs mm -hmm. but you know with Foundation Beyond Belief it's, it's a nice way to be kind of just corral all these different independent organizations you know, into an organized effort, and I think that's one way, one one thing that the atheist movement has been doing more and more over the past year is, is it's been a very a very grassroots organization. Call in, call in. What's that? Oh, call oh, in. <laughs> okay, I was wondering what you were doing. Yeah. Don't freak me out like that. I, I didn't know <laughs> if you were suddenly demonically possessed. <laughs> Well, I've been that all my life, so yeah. <laughs> or at least I, that's what people claim. Okay, but you know, we, the the atheist organ, the atheist community has been a very grassroots, and as a result, you have all these independent organizations popping up all over the place. Mm -hmm. And recently, in recent years, they've really started to come together into more o more organized, more focused. And the Foundation Beyond Belief has been the the best way, the, the answer for the charity aspect of it is to organize it, you know, focus our efforts, focus our resources into where it's actually needed. Well, not just focus, but also bring attention to charities you may not have heard of that might slip through the cracks. Yeah. It's, it's long overdue. It, it, it is. It is. But I think, <coughs> I, I mean, that's... I think we're at the point we can we can start to seriously do this. Now, the the podcast itself was actually uh, put on by what's an, a secular programming network known as Secular FM. You can find you can find this online actually at www.secular.secular.fm, and what they are is they are the first of its kind, a 24-7 secular broadcasting network. Now this has been something that we, that has been really sought after for a very, very long time, which is a secular broadcasting network, 24-7 devoted to it. For all the channels out there on, that are, there are several, many, many religious channels and programming on television. <laughs> many, many religious. Many, many, many. And I remember Matt Delahunte in a speech in 2011 was was talking about it, saying, "There's three shows out there about pawn shops. Why don't we have our own network?" Yeah. And just just dedicated to a secular programming, and this is a 24/7 network called uh, as again Secular FM. Why why do they call it a, a podcast? Well, they are the the whole 
I- internet radio has really taken off because of iPods. Mm-hmm. That's where they get the the idea. Of pods is where, for those of us, if it, where people can actually stream the 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 radio the radio show over their 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 iPod, which is why they call it a podcast. Mm-hmm. And you mean, uh, iPod or uh, iPad? iPod. Okay. But and usually they're down, downloadable to any mobile MP3 players. Even though maybe the term's not very not correct or in a in a total sense anymore, it's more of a a collective sense. Like for example, I have actually a Samsung brand of the iPod, but I still call it an iPod because people know what that is. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> but inter- internet radio is maybe a better way to to talk about some of this. Okay. Where in, in internet radio has been a, a, a been taking off for the last few years. Now it would be nice to get perhaps a, a secular television programming before television goes out of style, which it might in the next 50 years, and everything goes internet. But this is really the first step towards that is mm-hmm. is secular FM. Because and I th- I think it's something that's really needed because right now. The only way to get the word out about secularism is really to, in some sense, stumble across it. Mm-hmm. Because there, it's, it's sometimes hard to find an internet radio program unless somebody tells you about it or you know it's there. We're having a central program gives us an opportunity to bring awareness to all the different, uh, all the different programming that's out there. Mm-hmm. Now, for Secular FM, what they what they do is they actually rely on on patronage, uh, people pledging money towards the station. But they also will donate 25 percent of that to a pro- the, of, of donations of their own to to secular charity. Except for in the case of this month alone, up until Friday, they will donate everything pledged to the station to Foundation Beyond Belief. Oh, that's nice. Now, in the case of, and every month they're going to switch a charity which they are going to promote. And I think this is one thing that's nice about that, as well as with Foundation Beyond Belief, is it is how much it prom- it promotes promotes charities and it, it it kind of does the research for you. Mm-hmm. As I've said a few times, where it, it'll help you find things that maybe you haven't been able to see before. Now, next month, their their charity of, of choice is, is going to be the Richard Dawkins Foundation, for good reason, too. They, the Richard Dawkins Foundation put in, as I said, mentioned before, the Richard Va- Dawkins Foundation did a lot to promote, promote the foundation beyond belief and did a lot to support the podcast. So I think that's about all I have to say on those topics. I mean, oh, uh, one, uh, one, one other, uh, one other thing I left off here. Well, actually, uh, <laughs> thanks for reminding me. Was uh, the, it was a no, another organization known as Be Secular. Uh, they were the ma- the uh, sponsor for the podcast. And were a, a big supporter, also a very, very big supporter of this event. Mm-hmm. And Be Secular is another uh, great charity to promote secularism and the separation of church and state, and really, really get the word out uh, about mm-hmm. about po- secularism in a positive manner. Well, it, uh, you know, we've been uh, denigrated uh, so much. In the past, uh, right. y- you know, uh, all we ever hear from uh, some people is, oh, uh, you know, how uh, useless, how uh, rotten uh, uh, people of non belief are. They have no morals uh, or anything. Well, you know, I, I put to you that uh, it really doesn't take uh, a God. 
to give you morals. People have had morals uh, uh, since the very uh, uh, beginning, but they always seem to equate uh, uh, Speaking of this delusion, it's God like, or, or you know, I talk Bible. about this in my science and pseudoscience class where Matt Thornton comes in and does a guest lecture. But, it's like uh, those guys who believe you can knock people out without touching them. Have you seen those videos? In uh, martial arts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get really close to them in some way and use, a, I'm use an energy. Little, they knock uh, them out. Yeah, yeah so it's just the most uh, completely uh, ridiculous thing. But disabusing someone uh, of that, you know, we, we could. We could triage this, or we could make some kind of uh, hierarchical. I think we're we could have right some now. criteria to invoke but to discern which the, um, is the more immediate the other thing problem. I, want to say is I have chosen doesn't necessarily to attack the faith virus in terms of religion, time. No. because I do that think it can that that's be sometimes a problem that needs our immediate concern. Yeah, for example, but you could just as easily do this with anything else, alternative medicine or martial arts or what have you. Martial itself. arts is easier. It's easier mm -hmm. because you there can just take these guys acknowledge uh, that similar weight and you could just throw them in a cage and you have to set some rules. You can't have people gouging their eyes or eyes out or biting each other's groins off. But you set some basic rules and you close the cage and that's the way you adjudicate which skill is better. We're going to take a break and uh, listen to Daryl Wade the about secular sex how and sexuality, be, how and we'll be back with author Peter Bogosian that humanism just a few really minutes. is. As and be secular is really the same way. It's not. It's not there to really. Secular sexuality. Be secularism is, is about. Hello. Really about I'm a Daryl Wade, this, author of The God Virus and where Sex and God. How it's, religion distorts sexuality. It, it's, it's, it's promoting Today I want to talk secularism about in a positive manner, not necessarily to be just, critical just, of religion. Just, uh, second, control room. Can you shut off our uh, earpiece, please? We're uh, getting all kinds of conversations that's distracting the heck out of us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, sorry about the technical problems. Mm -hmm. um, we have. But as I was talking about with be secular, it's more or less it's it's secularism in a positive light where it's not there to it's not there to counter religion. Well, not not necessarily to criticize religion, but just to promote just secularism. Just not be with it. Uh, I mean, it's not against it. It's just right. we go on without it. Right. 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 So, I think that's. Um, that's about it. If you have anything else, uh, if anyone watching this has anything they want to talk about uh, in terms of foundation beyond belief or secularism in general, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, please but give us a call. Hopefully the number will go up uh, on the screen shortly. <coughs> But uh, but definitely again uh, for the final uh, again one more time uh, if you want if you're interested in contributing to either Secular FM or the Foundation Beyond Relief well for Secular FM their website is www.secular.fm and the Foundation Beyond Belief is uh, I don't have their website here but you can it's a Google a quick Google search will will get you there and you can become a sustaining when what they in the, at the end of the promotional video they talked about sustaining membership and what that means is you can give you know, you set aside you know a monthly pledge and what they do is they'll take that monthly pledge and divide it amongst the their promoted charities uh, as they as they they showed that they had you know five different charities for five for five different causes but those charities are going to rotate every quarter. So if you want to if spread your money around, that's one way to do it. But you also have the option maybe you find a charity you like. You know, you can keep you can keep giving to it over and over again. Yeah, I mean, if uh, if you have a particular charity that you uh, want um, want us to don excuse me donate to, uh, then by all means uh, you just you know tell us on your check uh, for a particular. Uh, charity and we'll make sure that, that your particular uh, check will go toward that uh, right. charity rather than being spread out um, amongst all of them. Yeah. I'm, I mean personally I have to say one of one very popular charity amongst the secular community that I, I can understand why is called is called Charity Water 
and what their purpose is is to go in and help clean up the water supply of poor villages mm -hmm. and giving <coughs> giving a fresh water uh, giving getting fresh water to to poor areas what really helps you mean like this uh, like the village of york right pennsylvania uh, <laughs> <laughs> that i i uh, it, you might complain about it, but yeah, it's yeah. it's it's really it's really really bad in in some countries. And oh, what, they drink they don't water; they drink mud. Yeah, yeah you know, and uh, exactly. they they take off their uh, that the outer layer of clothes and, and put it over a bucket, and then pour filter yeah. the water through their clothes. Yeah. So uh, at least it's it's halfway clean enough to uh, to drink but yeah. still it doesn't get rid of the uh, all the germs the, the, the yeah. dysentery and uh, everything else that you get for that and uh, people walk around today with their their little uh, crystal springs uh, bottles and uh, their yeah. perrier bottles <laughs> of sparkling water uh, and everything and uh, then just toss the bottle in the uh, in the trash or mm -hmm. in the the street and they don't even give a single thought uh, to uh, someone uh, over uh, in, in Africa or Ethiopia sure. uh, that, that, that is will be dying but for the lack of just that amount of water right and uh, for, and this is uh, mm -hmm. This is one of those uh, definitely a big world health problem is is the water supply, and Charity Water is a a secular charity. It does not do anything for profitizing, and I know it's it's been promoted several times on, on the Thinking Atheist podcast as well as some other major major atheist uh, atheist radio uh, internet radio shows. Yeah, I mean, we we don't make uh, anyone pray with us um, before we give them donations. Uh, we don't ask anyone uh, to give up uh, their God or to deny Jesus or deny the the Holy Ghost or to um, you know to become a Jewish or, uh, or whatever. Uh, it's you know there's no conditions that we uh, put on. It's uh, certainly no religious uh, okay. conditions that we put on uh, um, any of our help. <coughs> so what I I thought I'd move on to then is uh, finishing up something I was talking about in the last program, where uh, Hemant Mehta, A.K.A. the Friendly Atheist, was talking about <coughs> things atheists should stop saying. Mm -hmm. And the reason he did that is he, w one thing he he likes to do is okay, try to encourage better conversations, like stay above some of the rhetorical arguments or even the bad arguments because mm -hmm. those can have actually a negative impact on others as well and, and really make it harder to get the message across that we that we were trying to get across and he was he was talking about some of the things <coughs> and there were there were a few I didn't get to that I, I really wanted to cover and <clears throat> and some of these are, are, are my own personal opinion uh, one of the one of the things I think we should definitely stop saying, and I see this, we we say this a lot at our tables, and that is, whenever, whenever a Christian wants to end a conversation at a table, they'll usually say, walk away, saying, I'll pray for you, mm -hmm. and our retort is usually something along the lines as, well, I'll think for you. Yeah. Which, we I think we can do better than that. I think maybe a better thing to say is, well, what do you think that's going to do? Because mm -hmm. as I said before, as, you know, as Brian was saying in the, in the podcast, you know, it's, you know, not doing anything is the same as praying. Well, maybe get them to think about what, what they're saying. And I, like you said before, that people who say, I'll pray for you probably don't. Yeah. And obviously we, we, we don't think for people. No. And, but, but I mean, uh, maybe even asking, well, uh, what is it that you will pray for? Right. 
I mean, no. are, are, are you going to pray for our sal salvation? Are you going to pray that we um, accept your uh, God? I mean, there's a lot that you could be asking uh, right. uh, for. And uh, if, there's also the argument: if if he can if he can reveal himself to me, why hasn't he done it yet? Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's a lot better. You know, I, I'll think for you is something that belongs on a bumper sticker, not not uh, not in a conversation. Well, it, it, it's been uh, you know done to death yeah. uh, uh, as much as I'll pray for you or you're going to hell. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's uh, and that's that's why I think uh, it could be better. Um, another another main uh, another argument I see floating around occasionally that it's been mostly abandoned, but it just seems to keep coming up is the, the arguments of, uh, concerning Nazareth. A lot of people try to make the argument that Nazareth didn't exist during the time of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is, is there some evidence that it was existing? I think with the archaeology you could maybe conclude it existed somewhere else. Yeah. Like there's, there's definite questionable, things questionable about the refounding of the town. But there is, uh, there is some some manuscripts that showed the town at least existed by 70 A.D., mm -hmm. which, which if it, for it to not exist 70 years prior to that is, and then have an operating temple 70 years after mm -hmm. that. Well, for the longest time, uh, you know, they thought that uh, Jericho didn't exist, right. and uh, and then one day they started excavations, sort of in the middle of the, de uh, the desert, and found these uh, walls. And right. uh, of course, it was in the general area that they right. uh, expected. But you know, th that's the Middle East. You, you have sandstorms that bury right. everything in a in a very short period of time, especially if uh, you know the, the city isn't used or it's been raised to the ground. Right. Uh, there's so all of a sudden it comes uh, as a shock to people when you, you hear like uh, scientists and archaeologists and uh, everyone saying, you know, we were wrong. Yeah. Like that we think there was Jericho. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's why it's why it can be a little. Oh, oh yeah, it's why it's it's harder to assert that something doesn't exist or never existed. Mm -hmm. And, but I mean, you could definitely raise questions about whether the where the original location was, whether it was founded somewhere else or not. But it's really, it's really not even necessary to say that because I, I think what a lot of people think the whole idea of him coming from Nazareth came from is a te uh, there was an, uh, there's supposed to be some sort of prophecy where he'd be a Nazariah. Mm -hmm. Which actually doesn't correlate to the word Nazareth at all. It means something completely different. Mm -hmm. But then we say Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. You know. But it's it's actually another just yeah. another distorted prophecy that that um, and there we, we've seen many times where the Gospels have uh, have stretched or distorted prophecies to make them fit. And I think I, I think it's better to stick to those kinds of arguments rather than a overstepping argument that says something absolutely did not exist, which is a lot harder to back up. There's, there's, there's much better arguments out there. And one of, the, uh, one of the more interesting things I came across that I've seen, I've seen atheists actually say this, and I, I don't know why, they, uh, why some say it, but they, they talk about even though they're an atheist, they can still somehow appreciate the Bible, not in a literal sense, but in more of a case of literature or the, an insight into the culture. Mm -hmm. And I look at it as too much harm has come out of that book to find anything redeeming about it. Yeah, because I mean, it's a blanket excuse to do almost anything. What's that? It's a blanket excuse yeah, yeah. Uh, to try and get away with anything. Well, it's in the Bible, right. so therefore uh, we could do it. Or, or even just, 
Um, I mean, just just this last week, you know, <laughs> this is last week a reality show. Uh, snake handler James Coots actually oh, yeah. <laughs> actually was killed from snake bite. Uh, he's uh, one of the radical Pentecostalists who <coughs> believed in snake handling because of a passage out of Mark 16:8, and he's actually survived three other snake bites. Mm -hmm. So, which is a bit rare but it's actually possible because not you know not every time a snake bites someone it doesn't always inject the poison you know? yeah it's not like it hits you and automatically injects it. it 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 takes it an effort to do that and sometimes it doesn't get all the poison in i saw a program um uh, five six years ago uh about this research uh, person that uh worked with snake venom and with uh, with live snakes, and he said that uh, what he did for his own protection uh, was that um, he injected uh, himself with very small doses of venom of the type of snakes that he worked with, enough where it would just like make him feel like he's got a, a bad cold, but you know, not kill him, not stop his uh, heart. And uh, he said that way he, he thought that uh, if ever he was to be uh, bitten uh, by a, a snake, that he would have somewhat of a tolerance uh, and it wouldn't kill him. I'm not sure that I'd <laughs> want to take that chance. Right. I mean, you can build up a tolerance to it as well, but <coughs> but you know that's that's the problem with with uh, biblical literalism. Uh, one one person talking about it this over the past week that well that I saw had an interesting w had an interesting look at even Martin Luther, the founder of Protestant Christianity, once once talked about people with all kinds of maladies or illnesses and he said you know those people with the illnesses and the physicians who heal them as though they proceeded from natural causes are ignorant blockheads where he <laughs> believed that illnesses were caused by demons and devils and not germs but the reason that he thought that was because of Matthew 15:20, where Jesus refuses to wash his hands Mm -hmm. And somebody actually posted the, uh, the, the, I think it was Aaron Ra posted the quote from Martin Luther, and said, "This is an example of Ken Ham of his century." Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that was uh, a, a pretty, a pretty decent analogy. And you, you look throughout the ages, for example, Galileo putting under under house arrest, mm -hmm. or any, any other doctrinal. It's, and I, I think one thing that uh, that Hector Avila has uh, argued for in in a, one of his writings was that one of the big problems in with the Bible is it takes up so much scholarship. You you have to wonder why there's so much still so many people in biblical scholarship. You know what more do they have mm -hmm. to say? When I mean the the Bible isn't getting longer. Uh, really, that right. they're not uh, uh, retranslate. I mean, it's got as many translations as it's going to get, and there's always those root uh, of uh, root people that say that there is only one translation, and that's right. the uh, King James version of the Bible, and nothing uh, right. else m matters, and they're not, they're not even going to consider uh, anything uh, right. else. Well, words change, uh, yeah. you know, over the, uh, over the centuries, and can have slightly different uh, meanings. Yeah. So, but, but uh, nothing ever changes with uh, religion. Everything right. remains static. Yeah, and, and and that's the thing. It's he was one thing that Hector Avalos was talking about was how there are still stacks of ancient texts that lay untranslated or not even looked at yet. Yeah. So I mean, it would be really nice to put some scholarship towards that. And it's funny you talk about the uh, the King James version of the Bible. 
why a lot of people still go to that is it's actually one of the most honest translations of the Bible there is. Uh, yeah, I I, I would uh, say maybe it, it, it's on it, uh, honest, but I wouldn't exactly say that the uh, the council at Nicaea had uh, too many uh, brains the way that they uh, you know put the book uh, together and all the contradictions uh, that's uh, within the, uh, the the Bible. But that's only my personal well, opinion. Just, um, <clears throat> well, for example, the New International Version of the Bible has been has been known to fudge it, fudge their translations quite a few times to try to to resolve these. Um, but before I move on, Doug, did you have anything you wanted to talk about tonight uh, before? Oh, the, there was just one uh, little uh, thing uh, here, just uh, take a minute. Um, I was uh, listening to a, another one of these people rant on the uh, the TV uh, about uh, how America is a Christian nation and uh, it should display that. Well, I thought, well, in that case, shouldn't we have a, a Christian flag? So this is the Christian flag that I've come up with. stars uh, there, you can use crosses. And across each cross it says, in God we trust. And since it's Christian, you don't need any uh, other uh, religions here in uh, good old America. Yeah, they can live here if they don't cause trouble uh, or anything, but uh, Jesus only loves uh, Christians and everyone else will go to hell like that. So I think we should adopt that as the flag of the uh, of the Christian United States uh, there. That's just my slight uh, input. Uh, but there is one other little thing that I want to tell you about. And if you haven't seen it on the, uh, the TV, there is a new program uh, coming out in March okay uh, called cosmos a space-time odyssey now this was originally uh, you know like a, in the 1970s uh, and uh, it, it was always a uh, when you uh, call it it, it it was So I was trying to, uh, you know, it, it was iconic, uh, really, when it comes right down to it. But this is a remake uh, from, you know, just 25, 30 years ago uh, with all the latest scientific uh, discoveries that they have made in, uh, in astronomy, in, uh, in chemistry, uh, w with, uh, it, with medicine. And, everything, and it covers the whole gambit, and uh, it doesn't really uh, prosthesize uh, anything. It's just showing you uh, what science has come up with and, and how it benefits uh, us. And uh, I have seen some previews of the, the show, and probably on the next uh, program we have uh, in March, I'm going to uh, run a little three-minute promo uh, of the thing. And and uh, it's really worth uh, watching. I mean, some of the pictures they have uh, got of the, the, the universe, it's just breathtaking. And it doesn't matter if you believe in God or you don't uh, believe in God. The information is something that everyone uh, should know because it is what it is and it doesn't contradict. Uh, you know whether or not you want to believe uh, a god did it or it happened by itself you know so it's just presenting the facts for you to consider and now I'll put it back to you uh, okay thanks yeah I mean I uh, was able, able to catch the original of Cosmos by Carl Sagan it's definitely definitely <laughs> still worth watching that's I couldn't remember his name. I had a oh. m mental block, and I'm got oh, up on God. the screen here looking. I'm going, what was the guy's name? 
Yeah, Carl. Yeah, he's, uh, he also got an, another uh, good series called Demon Haunted, Demon Haunted Worlds, uh, which was uh, always great. Um, also, don't forget, uh, uh, I believe we mentioned before that Sunday, May the 11th, that's Mother's Day, uh, our first uh, York information uh, booth uh, of the season will be opened up probably uh, somewhere uh, on the corner of uh, Beaver and Market Street. So you can come and visit us uh, all there and you can tell us we'll go to hell or you can t express how glad you are that we are there. Sort of a beacon in the night. I'll um, and you were talking about some of the other uh, for example, the Demon Haunted World is definitely something on my reading list for this year. I haven't had a chance to read that one yet. But uh, some of the other, actually a couple uh, new books coming out in the for secular books coming out this this month, uh, no, not this month, but next month in the month of March from some pretty, pretty big figures in the atheist community. Uh, most notably, uh, David Silverman will be releasing I Atheist on March the 10th, I might uh, might do a review of that actually within a <coughs> couple of episodes. And well, I, I will if I should say if they have it on Kindle. Yeah, I I, do, I don't I don't know if I'll be able to get it in uh, in paperback any <laughs> in paperback anytime soon if uh, the local Barnes and Nobles actually would carry it. Yeah, our our next show, by the way, will be uh, March Tuesday, March the 11th, and the one following that will be uh, Tuesday, uh, March the 25th. So you know, be sure to put that uh, on your calendars, and uh, I will be uh, getting in uh, a, a little bit deeper uh, to. Uh, politics in the the United States and religion and basically spouting off how um, the country's going to down the tubes and uh, Congress has the lowest rating uh, I think that it's had in what I think they said uh, 20 or something years that only uh, about 40 percent of the people uh, in the United States approve of the job that they're doing well I'm not one of the ones that, that approve that's for Doug on shore uh, but you'd be surprised how many uh, that say that they're God fearing men but they're the <coughs> They're the same God-fearing men that uh, will spend four thousand dollars on a hooker, uh, you know. So anyway, back to Jacob. Uh, <laughs> in fact, um, I actually my father, who's still a, a fundamentalist Christian, uh, posted on his Facebook this month pretty much one uh, an article that was talking about it was someone. Someone set, set, set out to to write an article about uh, just speaking out against same-sex marriage, mm -hmm. and then they re they abandoned that idea when they f found out what the divorce rate was in this country. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, that's actually about all the time we have it for tonight.